Okay, sure deal. So it's just a couple quick disclaimers. Uh, we're gonna do a head to toe assessment, a full primary secondary assessment. We'll verbalize a lot of the transport risk by some portions. This will be very consistent with the airway breathing lab that you're going to do in the future modules along with the cardiac trauma lab that you'll do in the module. You'll see a lot of that repeated and reiterated there. Um, just a couple of kick details that we want to put up in front. You may be given a scenario. We do not expect you to be able to treat or recognize what you find during the scenario. We only are evaluating your ability to assess the patient. So your three physical exam techniques here would be to inspect, palpate, and auscultate as appropriate. So in this case for the evaluators, tell the evaluators what you're inspecting for. What you're looking for physically, tell the evaluators. What you're palpating, just simply show us the correct palpation technique along with the correct auscultation technique. I have Mr. Kegwe over here giving me a scenario. He will respond to me and as I will respond to the scenario as appropriate. So, Mr. Keggs? All right, so you have a uh, male patient in a motor vehicle accident. Okay, male patient, motor vehicle accident. I'm going to verbalize my scene side look as such. Uh, BSI for my buddy and I, is the scene safe? Yes. Okay, mechanism of injury is a motor vehicle accident. Hopefully my number of patients is one. Yes. I'll have additional help on standby and I will probably take C-spine precautions. At this point, just tell us yes or no, you'll take C-spine precautions. You don't have to perform the act up yet. They'll come later in musculoskeletal. So, general impression, verbalize this. What do I see here and smell? You see a guy ejected from a vehicle laying on the ground. Okay, so the guy is ejected, uh, he's laying on the ground, I'm suspecting trauma, uh, more than likely I'll be jaw thrusting. Let's go and do our assessment, so ab who? Sir, sir, are you okay? There's no response. Okay, hey, my, my name is Mr. Andy, I'm from, from EMS, can, can I help you? No response. Okay, so the alert portion right now ends, I do not have to ask him the three questions, but for completion's sake, the three questions for alert and orientation would be, What's your name? Where are you? What time is it? There is no response. There's no response. So let's go to a verbal. If you can hear my voice, squeeze my fingers. There is no response. Painful stimuli, we can rub the sternum, pinch no. the trapezius, pinch the inside bicep. Some people will say you can pinch also the nail beds. There is no response. This guy is now unresponsive or unconscious. You must state that as appropriate. The instructors cannot read your mind. So, at this time, I don't know if he's alive. Let's check a carotid pulse. We're gonna find the trachea, push medially into the trachea. Patient does have a pulse. He does have a pulse, so let's go and do our ABCs. So at this point, airway block, we're just gonna verbalize this airway block because you will actually have an airway breathing lab upcoming. Tell the instructor you will um, jaw thrust as appropriate or head tilt chin lift. Tell them that you would suction or look for foreign objects as appropriate. Finally, tell them that you would apply an NPA or an OPA, and that would suffice for the airway block. Let's go to breathing. You must expose the chest. Look for any injuries. Any injuries noted? No injuries. We must palpate for injuries. So what we're doing here is we're raking across the skin. We're trying to stretch the skin. So if there's any type of open wound that is not easily seen at first, we can open it, see it, and respond to it as needed. No injuries? Let's look, listen and feel. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting my hand on the diaphragm. I'm trying to feel any air in my face. I'm trying to listen for any abnormal breathing sounds. I'm looking for the rate of the breathing along with the quality of the breathing. What do I see? The patient is breathing rapidly. Okay, the patient is breathing rapid. At this time, we're just gonna move on with the rest of the assessment. So let's go to circulation. We're going to check the radial pulse. We can vertical pulses. Okay, we're going to check skin color temperature condition by touching the patient and noting pale, cool, and diaphoretic. Let's go ahead and do a complete blood sweep. A complete blood sweep. We're going to check the carotids, the big pipes. Look at your hands. Nothing. I'm going to go into the inguinals all the way down. Anything noted? No. Okay, we're going to ignore this amputation here and just pretend that we have the full leg there. Anything noted? No. Now we're going to go to the axials. Anything noted? Yeah. And then the body as needed. 
If you can, ideally what we would do is put our arms behind the patient here, touch our fingers together, to check for bleeding behind the patient. Some places they will have you, if there's a high index of suspicion for any injuries to the back that has a profuse bleed, we would log roll the patient, look as needed. There's no bleeding found from what uh, we found, okay? At this time, verbalize that you will treat for shock as appropriate. We'll teach you how to do that in detail later. Verbalize that this guy is a high priority for transport, meaning that he needs to go to the OR right now or to the most appropriate facility. Let's begin the secondary assessment. So at this time, you must tell us in this um, order the inspection portion. Tell me all of the acronyms you're going to look for. For example, I'm gonna look from head to toe for DCAP BTLS. You must now also define and explain what DCAP, B, DP, um, DCAP BTLS stands for. So DCAP BTLS is deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, penetrations, burns, tenderness, lacerations, and swelling. Do I see anything? Nothing noted. Okay, so from head to toe, we've already looked. Now let's look at the head more specifically. I'm gonna look for Pearl, look in the eyes, Pearl, pull out your light here, and we're looking for, are the pupils equal round react to the light? Nothing we're noted. also looking for raccoon eyes. Anything noted? No. Now we're gonna look at both sides of the ears. We're gonna look for cerebral spinal fluid or blood in the ears. We're gonna look behind the ears for battles sign. Let's look at both sides. Bilaterally, anything noted? No. Let's look into the ears. Cerebral spinal fluid, blood, anything noted? No. Look into the mouth for lobs, as in laceration, obstructions, blood, broken teeth, swelling, anything noted? No. All right, so that ends the inspection portion of the head. Let's palpate the head. What we want is fingertips or palms all around the skull, coming around to the zygomatics, the mandibles, as needed. Anything noted? No. Specifically, what you're palpating for here is, is there any tenderness, instability, or crepitus? Um, there is nothing to auscultate at the head. Let's go to the neck. We've already said decap BTLS. Let's look for the more detailed stuff at the neck, like is there any jugular vein distension? Is there any tracheal deviation? No. Let's go to the palpation portion. I want to take my fingers and drum up and down the cervical spine here. Anything noted? No. Nothing to auscultate. Let's move on. So we have the chest here. We already looked for decap BTLS, so let's start the the um, palpation portion. So put some weight on the clavicle bones, on the sternum, the rib cage, anything noted? No. We can also tiger claw again, anything noted? No. All right, at this time there is something to auscultate, so grab your stethoscope. You do not necessarily have to put it on, but what we want to know is can you put the head of the stethoscope in the correct spots? We want two apexes, two bases. So midclavicular line here, we're gonna go right underneath the clavicle bone. Clear. Clear. So at the bases of the lungs, we're gonna go right under the same midclavicular line under the pectoralis major. Clear and clear. All right. So we have IPA, inspected, palpated, and oscillated the chest. Let's go to the abdomen. At the abdomen here, tell us that you're gonna look for and feel for turd P. Turd P is a unique acronym for the abdomen. You're going to look and feel for any tenderness, any evisceration, rigidity, distension, and pulsating masses. Do I see anything yet? No. If I were to see any abnormalities, I'm not going to palpate it. But since I don't see anything, let's go ahead and palpate to further inquire. What we want to do here is stretch your fingers and hands out, and we want to use the fingertips here, rolling onto the body. This is the left upper quadrant, left lower quadrant, right upper quadrant, right lower quadrant. Please take note of the fingertips. The fingertips is doing the action. So this is what we're gonna evaluate, is where are your fingertips going? All right, anything noted? No. Okay, so let's go to the pelvis. At the pelvis here, we inspect for decap BTLS. There is another acronym here called BUD. Is there any blood, urine, or defecation uh, in the inguinal area? If not, then let's go ahead and palpate. The palpation here is we want to push on the iliac crest specifically. The iliac crest specifically. So on these mannequins, if you look at the screws here, this is the highest point of the pelvis. Put your palms here and we want to push into the ground 
as if we're doing a push-up. We want to push into the patient, pushing medially. You have to challenge the pelvis. The pelvis is a very stable platform. So again, the acronym of tendinous instability crepitus, when I push down, anything noted. Yeah. Let's move on. So the lower extremities, the upper extremities, we're gonna treat very similar. We look for decap BTLS, let's palpate. The palpation motion here is we want to do a twisting motion on these long bones and joints. So as I do a twisting motion up and down here, what I'm noting is that same acronym. Anytime I'm palpating for uh, bones, I'm palpating for that tenderness, instability, crepitus. So up and down the femur, the knee, tib, fib, the ankle. We'll continue here and we'll pretend the legs here also. Anything noted? So let's complete the assessment of the lower extremities by checking CSM. CSMs is only done in the secondary assessment. We're going to palpate and check for circulation, sensory, and motor functions. So the dorsalis pedis is high up on the foot here. It's between the first and second metatarsal of the intercostal space here. So is there a pulse? Pulse present. Okay. At this time, grab one of their toes and ask the patient, hey, what toe am I grabbing? Big toe. Be very specific about this question. If you ask the patient, hey, can you feel this? If he answers yes or no, can you as a provider confirm that? So the best question is, hey, what toe am I grabbing? And get the answer as appropriate. Finally, for motor functions, ask him, can you wiggle? Yes. If so, that's great. You can also ask, can he push up? or pull up, can he push down? That's also a motor function. We would do this bilaterally. Let's go to the upper extremities. We will continue the upper extremities the exact same way. Look for decap BTLS, palpate for tick. I like to do them both at the same time. I like to also check the CSMs at the same time so that I can compare them. Pulses? Present. What finger am I grabbing? Thumbs. Okay, can you wiggle? Yes. Okay, so CSMs are intact. We are done with the anterior surface. Let's go ahead, roll the patient towards you. Ideally, if you have an injury, we want to roll the patient off of the injury. Best way to do this mechanically is to move the patient's arm out of the waist so you can get closer to the patient's body. One hand at the shoulder, one hand at the waist. Keep one of your feet up so you can push off the ground. One, two, three, pull the patient towards you as best you can. If you have trouble, ask for a partner to help. We're looking at the back here for DCAP BTLS. Anything noted? Nothing. We're going to look for buds. Anything noted? No. So that's the inspection portion. Let's palpate. We're going to palpate the thoracic lumbar spines. Anything noted? No. Nope. You're going to put some weight on there. And then we're going to tiger claw up and down as we have done the interior surface. Anything noted? No. At this time, there's nothing to listen to here. Let's go ahead and put the patient back on the spine board. One, two, three, back onto the spine board as needed. Okay, so we put the patient down after we have checked the back. At this point, we're gonna verbalize the rest of this assessment. Tell us that you'll take a set of vital signs. Tell us that you would treat any non-life-threatening injuries. Um, you can also tell us that you will take a sample history, as in you will consider signs and symptoms. You'll ask about allergies medications, past current history, last oral intake, and then probably the most important events leading to.